Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for compositions. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to evaluate if a composition of functions is defined, and you should be able to prove general facts about compositions of functions from definitions. The motivation for this section is that we will see how to deal with applying many functions one after another. We'll also see how to take off your socks, whatever that means. To start us off, we're going to start with this exercise. So I want you to draw the following four functions. So take a moment and draw those. So this is an exercise from high school. We'll draw x squared. And then to draw 3x squared, you scale everything up. To take minus 3x squared, you reflect it across the x-axis, and adding plus 1 shifts it up vertically one unit. So this is something we saw earlier in high school, and it tells us how to construct a complicated function by thinking of it as applying simple transformations uh, to a known function, in this case x squared. So formally, this function is composed of four simple functions x squared, 3x, minus x, and x plus 1. So if we were to write out our function, it would be something like this. We performed a, then we performed b on that, then we performed c on that, and then d on that. So our function was minus 3x squared plus 1 is d of c of b of a of x, and then a whole bunch of brackets. So this is uh, how we write our function as a composition. But this is kind of annoying to write out because we have a lot of brackets here and it's not very readable. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up this notation so that it's readable. As an exercise for you, show that the order matters. Show that the composition a of b of x is not the same as b of a of x. This will help emphasize that compositions uh, depend on the order. So the first thing we're going to do is clean up our notation. Let f be a function from a to b and g be a function from c to d. The composition of g with f is denoted g circle f from a to d, and it's defined by the thing that you'd think. You first apply f, then you apply g. So it's g of f of x. So a couple things to note here. The domain of the composition is the domain of f, because the first thing you're doing is applying f, and then the codomain is D, because then you apply G and send everything to D. So our picture looks something like this. F goes from A to here, and G goes from C to D. One thing that we need to be careful of, though, is in order for this to be defined, we need to make sure that we can always take G of F of X. In particular, all of the outputs, G of, sorry, all of the outputs F of X need to be something that you're allowed to plug into G. So writing this out formally, you need that the range of f, all values that you actually get, live inside the domain of g. And that's illustrated in this picture here. Everything here from a in the domain of f gets sent into c somewhere. In practice, though, we're usually going to have a, a stricter condition. Typically, we'll have that the codomain is actually a subset of, dom of the domain of g, not just the range. Now let's see an example of why the order of the compositions really matters. So in the previous one, you might think that it was kind of special and it was uh, hard to remember, but this one will really emphasize why the order of compositions matters. Let f be the function from the naturals cross the naturals to the integers, denoted by the difference. So f of nm is n minus m. Let g be the function from the integers to the reals, denoted by the absolute value sorry, the square root of the absolute value. Now let's take a look at what happens when we take the composition in two different orders. The first one is g composed with f, which looks like take the square root of the absolute value of the difference. So the first thing you do is take the difference, and then you plug that into g of x. So if we denote this in a diagram, f will go from n cross n to the integers, n cross n to the integers, and then g will pick up that integer and send it to the reals. So it'll pick up this integer here and send it to the reals. 
This is what gcompose with f looks like. Now let's see the other direction. So if we're trying to compute uh, f composed g, then where does g go? g goes from the integers to the reals. So it takes an integer and outputs a real. And then f goes from n cross n to the integers. So it's going to try to pick up that real that g left, but it's not going to know what to do with it. f doesn't take in real numbers. f takes in pairs. So the problem is the outputs of g and the inputs of f don't line up. So in fact, we can't even compute this order. It doesn't make sense. This should really emphasize why this order and this order are different. In the next video, we're going to see some theory related to these things.